So here we are, a uh, close up on the turntable of two McLaren Senna's and uh, one is um, a Mini GT and the other is Hot Wheels. And to be honest with you, you've got to hand it to Hot Wheels. I think they've done an amazing job. So assuming that the Mini GT is accurate, which we would think it would be, um, the Hot Wheels, the difference between the two is, is really quite slim. And in fact, in fact, the, the tampos on the back of the Hot Wheels, the lights, um, make the Hot Wheels look more detailed than the Mini GT. But when you look closely, there's no doubt the Mini GT has got more detail. Um, the bodywork is sharper. Uh, the scoops for the engine are deeper and the, the metalwork is finer. And... Um, uh, the wheels are remarkably similar. So you've got standard wheels on the Hot Wheels. I can't remember what code they are, but they look so similar to the, the real deal on the Mini GT version. Um, I've done a little touching up on the Hot Wheels with a black marker pen um, to put in extra detail. So the Hot Wheels you're seeing um, is um, a little bit more detailed looking than the standard off the shelf. From, from the shop. Um, yeah, so the McLaren Senna, it's, I wouldn't say it's one of the prettiest cars. Um, interesting design. Probably, I don't know whether this camera is picking it up, but the Mini GT version has slight more rounded feel to it. The rear haunches seem to be just a fraction higher. They look a little bit more rounded than that of the Hot Wheels. And certainly um, my son's got a white version, Hot Wheels of the Senna, which um, almost looks more angular, almost as if it's made of Lego. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share with you the McLaren Senna. I think the Mini GT version is fabulous. It's, it's fantastic. The detail that goes into the Mini GT, um, I'm really impressed. So uh, we will go on to well since we've started on mclaren let's um look at other mclarens so i'm just going to take these off the turntable and uh be with you back in a second so uh here in front of you is the mclaren p1 um i think this is a beautiful design i just love the shapes the lines the way all the lines on these supercars converge to one another and crisscross um just a fantastic piece of artwork and the the Hot Wheels in this tiny scale, um, I think, captures the essence of of that. Um, so we're just going to play around with the zoom, get in really close here, so we can appreciate just a little bit more detail. I like what Hot Wheels have done with the tampos on the lights, the red strip. It's really effective. And um, the spoiler, um, I like metal spoilers because it makes the car feel more solid, but you don't get the fineness. Um, that is the drawback of that. So um, I'd like to show you um, the, the top view of, of this car. I just think it's, it's uh, just fantastic. I don't know whether, I, yeah, I'm going to be able to stand that up. So... Let's just wait for it to come round. And what I like about the top view is, um, once again, the converging lines. So you just check that out. That's just fantastic. Yeah. So, um, next McLaren coming up. This is the uh, McLaren 675 LT, um, made by Majorette in this instance. So, uh, Majorette, are, I, um, I love Majorette. I collected them as a child. I used to buy them from, I used to cycle to the local village post office when I was 11 years old or however old it was. And uh, no doubt there'd be some Majorettes to collect. Um, Majorette has made a comeback. I think they could make these supercars sit a little bit lower. Otherwise, they're um, not bad detail. The interiors of Majorettes 
are superior to that of Hot Wheels. I do think Hot Wheels do skip on the interiors. They kind of make it look like a little bit of a detail-less jelly mold, with particularly with the steering wheel in Hot Wheels cars. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like this. This is just a, a superb design, well captured by Majorette. Nice tampo detail on the back. Okay, so moving on to the next McLaren. Um, uh, this is a P1 again, um, and uh, I like the colour of this and the, um, is that a Forza? Might be Forza, it might not be. Uh, the graphics on it. I just love those lines. And uh, next, McLaren. Well, it wouldn't be complete without the speed tail. So uh, here we go. Um, so few cars are designed with this rounded back, a wedge-shaped back, and it's, it's unusual to see this shape. And um, I'm glad Hot Wheels have, have decided to uh, carry out this, this, the copy of this design. They've got the vertical brake light at the back. Um, yeah, the wheels. Does the real car have different wheels on it? I think it does. Really nice, delicate color as well. Okay, so um, the next vehicle, I think we are gonna switch to Lotus. So Lotus is coming up. So here we go, Lotus Esprit Turbo. Um, I grew up seeing this car, so I remember in 1976 at my primary school, um, Father Christmas turned up in a Lotus Esprit. And um, why? Because I went to school in Norfolk in the UK and Lotus have, were made, or still are made, um, in, uh, in Norfolk. Um, oh, for the life of me, the, the, the town has escaped me, but they are still, I believe, made in Norfolk. And um, it was a lovely surprise uh, for a bunch of primary school kids to see this um, other planet-like vehicle turning up at our primary school. And who gets out? Father Christmas. Okay. Um, so, yeah, thank you to... Uh, a primary school in Norfolk for that. So I, I like the sharpness of the the Esprit, the, the first generation Esprit. Uh, really angular um, and incredibly low. I don't know how high it is. Is it as low as the 4 GT40? Uh, I don't know, but it's certainly low. I love the interior, the, way, the rake of the, the dash inside. And um, of course, this starred in the Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. Um, a slushy film, but one of my favourite and most enjoyable James Bond films with uh, Roger Moore um, and Barbara Bach. Um, how can you forget Barbara Bach? A uh, really beautiful woman. So, uh, fantastic film, really enjoyed it. Um, you may remember the chase scene with a helicopter um, chasing the Lotus Esprit on the island of. Oh, was it Malta? I can't remember. Maybe it is. I, I can't remember. Um, and the Esprit was being driven expertly. Um, it did a couple of circuits around in a car park area overlooking the sea um, with the helicopter trying to keep up with it. Um, yeah, fantastic scene. And um, this is the standard mainline version. Um, I would like to get the actual movie version which has the real riders and far more realistic looking tyres. Here it is in yellow. And um, th this yellow Esprit actually was showed in a brief scene in, in a film with Alan Partridge, well actually he's, he's whatever his um, real name is in real life, um, taking the part of Philip Green, if I've got that right, who uh, is the owner of um, 
was the owner or is the owner of Topshop and various other um, corporations. And Alan Partridge played the uh, part of a young boy who was a go-getter, businessman, very in-your-face. Um, hence him choosing this car to drive. And here it is in red. And the last colour I've got it in. Don't just the, love the angular lines of, of cars from the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s compared to today. Today's cars are far more complex in shape. Lotus Europa. car that looks different to uh, most mainstream sports cars. Very unusual. Whoops, it doesn't want to be on the turntable. Hold on. Okay, so um, yeah, unusual design at the back. Um, kind of angular design with a small back window. I don't think there's any other supercar, sports car that has that design at the back. And here's the original Matchbox version. Um, on the base of this uh, car, it says 1969. So this actual vehicle is um, 31 plus 20, 51 years old. Wow. So I guess a collectible piece. I don't know what its value is. Um, fortunately, I picked this up at a car boot sale for 20p. But it's nice um, when Matchbox, uh, as a standard, had opening features. And what's even nicer is that these doors, well, that particular door looks like it's hanging not very well, but when they close, they're quite well fitting. And they close really nicely. And it seems to be difficult to replicate on uh, a lot of uh, small die cars today. So um, I can't remember the name of this Lotus. It's not printed on the base, um, but I still think it's it's quite a, a as a uh, toy car. Um, I think Matchbox in this instance have done a good job. It looks a really nice nice example. So moving on and still keeping with the British makes, this is a Gumpert Apollo, G U M. P-E-R-T, Gumpert Apollo. Um, if you Google it, it's got some impressive performance statistics. Um, I've got a feeling it's about 2008. I might be wrong. Um, and this one is by CQ. Um, really nice, really nice detail. And don't you love the gullwing doors? I think the interior, you can just get a shot of that. Not really. Okay, but you can see the steering wheel, uh, the lensed lights. Um, it's all there. In terms of scale, this is a bit bigger than 164, so it's probably about 160. So it appears a little bit chunky and big next to standard Hot Wheels, but I will let it pass because I like it. And um, I like the solidity when you close the gullwing doors. Um, so here we go. So yeah, it just, just falls into place really beautifully. So that's the Gumper Apollo. I've seen one of these in real life at a car show um, on the south coast. Moving on. So here we are, um, Hot Wheels Aston Martin DB5 uh, from 1963. This particular Hot Wheels is has been, probably been made in the last five years, but yeah, 1963 was the year for this vehicle. Um, of course, associated with James Bond. What a fantastic looking vehicle. There it goes. So yeah, I've got to sort out my uh, turntable display. Um, yeah, there it goes again. So uh, yeah, 1963, associated with James Bond films, of course. 
um, beautiful design and when you see one of these cars in real life it it's a head turner um, I think I think uh, I've heard a lot of people who like those lattice wheels that Hot Wheels have made I must admit um, the tyres look like low profile and that doesn't go with this era of car so um, yeah I, I think Hot Wheels could have chosen a different wheel for that to uh, make it more authentic looking so uh, let's just steady this back on the, the turntable hopefully it's not going to run off again so I've uh, <laughs> so I've um, tended to the turntable hopefully uh, these vehicles aren't going to keep rolling off so yeah here we are DB5 in silver don't you just love that fantastic And here it is in a um, metallic black. I think they, they catch up the essence of the vehicle, particularly from the front uh, and also from the back. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got issue with those wheels. They really are, um, yeah, low profiles don't go with that era of vehicle. Anyway, we move on. So here we go, this is um, the Aston Martin specific, uh, specially designed for the Spectre James Bond film. Um, I, I don't know what happened, but yeah, apparently this vehicle was specifically produced for the James Bond film only. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, yeah, there you go. This is a really clean looking design. So uh, again, this is why this vehicle is on on this turntable and I love the front of this vehicle it's um, clean looking design and there's a fantastic uh, chase in the streets of Rome um, followed by one of Spectre's henchmen who's a crazy crazy nutter and James Bond managed to escape with the usual uh, ejector seat before the car splashed into the River Seine so yeah, beautiful design. Here we go, one more Aston Martin. Um, for the life of me, I uh, don't know which one this is, but I like this. It's a fantastic looking vehicle with a nice long bonnet, beautiful design. And um, I think I heard somebody on another YouTube channel saying this particular Hot Wheels of this version actually feels like an Aston Martin. It's a really solid Hot Wheels which rolls really nicely. So yeah, just gorgeous. Look at the light shining off that paint. Really nice, really nice example. Moving on. So keeping with the British makes um, and uh, you don't need me to tell you what vehicle this is. This is a fantastic E-Type Jaguar um, and this must be one of the few cars on the road ever where the bonnet is pretty much half the length of the vehicle and um, I had the the opportunity of driving one of these um, when I proposed to my wife um, I decided to I originally was going to hire a Lamborghini or something of that ilk uh, and then I looked at the cost of it and the deposit you have to put down. It was just astronomical. So I thought at the time, okay, let's go vintage. And I thought Jaguar E-Type. And uh, in Gloucestershire, I think it was, or Wiltshire, Wiltshire, um, came across this E-Type for hire, borrowed it for the weekend. And we drove up on to a hillside overlooking a cornfield um, where we saw crop circles um, being produced. Um, by a, uh, a uh, group of hippies, I guess, um, who had parked their bus at the end of the field. So it was a, a real special scene to uh, where I proposed to my wife overlooking this cornfield. And um, later on, uh, we had a, um, a few still shots. I, I did a photography session of my wife lying on the bonnet of this car. Um, and it just looked fantastic. Now, my wife actually knew 
that we were going to hire any type, but she kept quiet about it. Um, right, sorry about that. That was my wife just wondering when I'm going to make supper or light a fire. Anyway, so um, yeah, I proposed to my wife um, overlooking this cornfield where this crop circle was uh, in the process of being made in the bright sunlight. And um, we had a picnic hamper included in, in the weekend deal. And um, we then got uh, a various photographs of my wife on the bonnet of the car uh, or posing in the car. Uh, I mentioned that my wife actually knew it was meant to be a surprise, but she knew that she was going to see an E-type uh, because she saw my emails and um, uh, she had come dressed accordingly in, in vintage clothing to um, to uh, fit in with the era of the vehicle. So yeah, just superb design. Um, I remember when we drove it out of the little cottage where it was, uh, drove along the street in this village. I remember one guy walking along the road and he gesticulated with his arms in the air saying, uh, what, what the, what, what's this all about? And I think he was kind of thinking, you know, this is excess. Um, and it, indeed it is excess, but it's excess in a vintage way. Um, yeah, beautiful vehicle. So uh, this is uh, described as a coupe. Um, a 1961 and is this matchbox yeah i think it is matchbox so um slightly bigger scale the the uh, previous etap type that you saw is by uh, lesney um there's no date on it um and the scale of this particular of the lesney one which you just saw is probably about 160 Eight, so a little bit smaller than the standard 164. The yellow one you see in front of us is um, probably about 160 in scale. Um, it is a shame um, that these manufacturers, the, the toy manufacturers, don't stick to the same scales because it's just great to compare different size cars of the same scale to one another. And when they're all different scales, you can't really appreciate the, uh, the difference. So moving on, yep, so here is the lightweight E-Type, um, again probably about 160 scale, um, really nice example of Hot Wheels with the real riders and this of course goes with the the, um, the Haulers series, I've probably got that wrong, um, yeah just gorgeous, gorgeous looking vehicle. And here is the F-Type by Majorette. And um, my son, he, he, he's got one of these as well. He said he doesn't like the paint scheme. He said it looks plasticky, but you know what? I think this paint scheme is fantastic. Um, Majorette are really good at getting, getting these mirrored finishes. Just a superb finish. Um, really nice example. Sits a little bit high, so uh, which Majorette are good at doing. Should sit a bit lower. And then you can see the interior, or you can't see the interior, but the interior is really detailed once again. So yeah, that's one of my, this is one of my favorite 164 castings. And Major Egg do the door mirror as well. Okay, so um, uh, this is the XJ220 Jaguar. And I, I think this was never intended to be a road car. Um, just a track car. Uh, why do I like this vehicle? It appears to be really long and quite low. I like the deep air scoops behind the back doors that you can see and this is being well replicated by, by Hot Wheels. I think Hot Wheels could have chosen a different wheel design for this one. Um, I, I don't know what it looks like in real life but not sure if this wheel design captures what the car is all about. So we're gonna move on in a second. Uh, we've got, I think, one more British mark. So here we go, the uh, ben Bentley Continental. And um, yeah, I, I love this car in real life. It's uh, a thug of a vehicle. It's um, really, uh, large it's a large vehicle in real life 
and um, I like the smooth design, very rounded, luxurious, comfortable, just your perfect Grand Tourer and Major have captured the interior on this one. Oh, is it Major? No, it's not Major, it's Siku. They captured the interior on this. Well, it's a nice looking toy. Um, scale wise, it's probably about 162, just a fraction bigger than 164. And here we go, we're really spoiled for choice here. This is the latest Bentley Continental. Um, I hope I've got that right. And um, yeah, you can just see the, the detail from this toy manufacturer, they've done it beautifully. So this is Mini GT, and I would assume it's 164 accurate. Size-wise, it's a bit smaller than Siku's version, just only a fraction, you can hardly notice it. But what a beautiful design, and what a beautiful successor to the first Continental. This is somehow sleeker and more subtle, I guess, than the first Continental. Um, Mini GT have just captured the 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 look of this perfect with the windows. I love the the color of the tint, and um, yeah, one thing I've noticed if you look at the wing mirror is the uh, the uh, wing mirror that's coming into view right now is a little bit in the wrong position. But they're flexible. These wing mirrors, so you can push it down. I think without breaking it. We've got one more Bentley to go after this. This is simply known as the Bentley 4 litre and um, this is made by Days Gone By, Days Gone, um, British manufacturer of toys. They made absolutely hundreds of different designs and um, yeah, just a gorgeous looking Bentley from vintage times. So um, I think we've uh, we've covered all the British makes. So we're now going to move on, and um, I'm going to do two non-licensed, no-brand vehicles next. So here, oh, right, it's nearly fallen off. So here is a um, non-licensed uh, vehicle. So uh, clearly an imaginary design. Um, there is no brand on the base of this vehicle, so we don't know what make it is or which manufacturer made it. We do know it's made in China. Um, I think some time ago I did Google uh, the word Aurora, which is on this. I'm not sure it came up with anything, um, but I like the design of it. I like the converging lines. Um, I do like the opening doors. They've got a satisfying clunk sound when you close them on this particular toy. And um, I'm going to show you the top view of it right now. Um, so, um, right, so there you go, there, there's the top view of it. You can see those converging lines and then when you clunk this door shut, it just completes the look. So yeah, I'm, I'm really like it. What I don't like about this, um, you might think, why have I got this on the turntable? Um, the, the wheels, they just really trash it. And the stance to an extent, the stance of this vehicle is a little bit high in the front. So uh, I think this would be good for a wheel swap. Uh, maybe if I do a wheel swap on it in future, I'll um, stick on YouTube for you to see. Um, so there's one more um, of this ilk coming up right now. Here it is. Uh, again, I love the way the doors open and close on this. It's a Another interesting design, um, considering this is non-licensed, it's from some designers, some toy designers' imagination. I think it's got uh, uh, it's got takes from various vehicles on it. Um, might look a bit Lamborghini from the rear, possibly not sure. From the front, you've got like an Aston Martin grille, Aston Martin lights, definitely. Uh, the side profile looks a bit Japanesey. Um, yeah. And um, here is the Koenigs Koenigsegg. Um, this is the only uh, Koenigsegg I have. Uh, this is made by Hot Wheels. Um, I love the design of this. 
Let's just get in close on that. And um, don't think it was this Koenigsegg, but uh, there was a Koenigsegg on the film uh, Need for Speed. If you ever seen it with uh, Aaron Paul, who who uh, starred in Breaking Bad, um, Need for Speed. Um, not sure if my wife liked the movie. I think she just complained. Well, she didn't watch it. She just heard the boom of the Mustang engine coming through the speakers in the room next door. Um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed the film. Uh, got some great driving sequences in it and a great soundtrack, engine soundtrack, a lot of bass. So Need for Speed, if you haven't seen it, watch it. So here is a uh, 2011 Fisker Karma. Um, without Googling this, this uh, again, I can't recall uh, the country of origin for this vehicle uh, and its, its history, but yeah, it was made in 2011. And do I think it's an electric vehicle? I can't remember because I know Hot Wheels have put a, what looks like a sort of solar panel design on the roof on this particular one. Um, but I, I believe the um, this performance not that impressive. I think it's more about looks. But I like it. It's a really lovely design. It's a bit Porsche Panamera, which I think came after the Karma. Okay, so I'm going to take a break now. Um, I think I've got to uh, make supper for the family and um, I will come back to you in a moment to uh, move on to Lamborghini, Ferrari, four GTs and all those Porsches which I'll show you later plus the Gran Turismo. So I'll see you in a few minutes. In fact I will see you in part two. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.